Uh, Mori Nakoto, um, I'd like to open the Planning and Strategy Committee for the 9th of December. And um, just to begin with, we'll just quickly run through the housekeeping and safety procedures. So if there is an emergency, we will follow our committee administrators outside. There is a defibrillator on the link span. And this is a non-smoking building. Um, we are recording the meeting and uh, we'll be voting electronically today. And so if you are um, coming up to speak, if you could just please give your name first for the recording. And I'll just now call for apologies. Are there any apologies today? Perfect. Um, well, I will now adjourn the meeting until the conclusion of the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Tenakoto Katoa, Hari Mai Kitenehui, Kitimana Fenua, Hemihinui, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Katoa. Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you here today for the Environmental Sustainability Committee meeting of the 9th of December, and particularly to guests in the gallery, a warm welcome. Um, you've just heard our health and safety procedures. Um, and that the meeting's being recorded. I ask you to be mindful of that. And I will call, firstly, for any apologies. There being none, we will move on to ask if there's any um, additional or late items. I'm not aware of any. Appearing to be none move on and ask for any declarations of interest. Appearing to be none, moves us to item four, which is uh, public comment, and I haven't heard of any public comment other than the two presentations already on the agenda. I assume that means there is no public comment, which moves us on then to the first of our presentations, and I'd like to invite Jean Hara and Chris Baker um, from the Palmerston North Women's Health Collective to um, Kiara, and thank you. So welcome both, and you have um, 10 minutes of our time and looking forward to hearing from you this morning. Tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora tātou. I'm Jean Hira. Kia ora, I'm Chris Baker. I first want to start by acknowledging Rangitane as mana whenua. And it is great to see Palmerston City Council working more closely with Rangitani. And very important in the area of death in particular, I think, in terms of working with Rangitani. I also want to acknowledge our, our dead who are always with us. And at times when you're talking about death or experiencing funerals, it often brings our dead closer to us. And today, it's the first anniversary of Waikari White Island disaster. And also for the Muslim community, we had the report released yesterday, the Royal Commission's report into the attack on Christchurch Mosque. So it seems like a really auspicious day to come and talk to you about death. And it's actually 25 years this year. I think it was December too that I submitted my PhD. And it's very interesting that Death has called me back this year to do some more work. So that also feels really important. And my work, our work, had quite a strong bicultural emphasis. I just want to acknowledge that and just acknowledge our colonisation history in this country, which is also something to always remember and, and the deaths associated with that. So today, as you know, we've come to, again... 25 years later, because I think I did first talk to council 25 years ago as well, in 1995, um, to support the establishment of an eco-bureau, or eco-bureau options as part of the 
the mahi for striving for an eco-city. And the time feels really right now. Um, we first came to talk about this issue, this issue as the Palmerston North Women's Home Death Support Group, which was part of my PhD study. And um, kind of through that process discovered the um, eco, uh, logical, the environmental side of things as well. But what brought me to it was the death of my father. And I had a typical Pākehā funeral and realised on a, a spirit and gut level that something wasn't right. And I felt more affinity with Māori ways of death and discovered that our old culture as um, European peoples, Pākehā peoples, was also quite parallel. So it used to be far more like what, what Māori were doing. And at that time, Elizabeth Frank had first advocated for natural burial with Waitakere City Council and was successful. So that was um, part of the Waikometi Cemetery. And around that time, I talked to Alan Fielding from the City Council, and he was involved with the environmental side of things back then. So we're not clear how much work's already occurred um, by the Council on the whole eco-burial side of things. But I do understand that you've you've changed the cemeteries and cremation bylaw to a, an, allow for natural graves. So I feel you just now need a suitable site for sites to, to, for this work. And surely that can't be too difficult to implement. I mean, it could be part of the current cemetery used by the City Council. That's what's happened in Whakatane. Or um, even better, if it was a standalone natural burial site. Well, it could be in collaboration with the wider region, so there's, there's lots of possibilities. Uh, the first standalone natural burial cemetery is Makata Cemetery, I understand, in Wellington. That was 2008. And we have Natural Burial New Zealand now, which is um, advising <coughs> and about what's, what's needed and assisting in development. <coughs> and close to us, I understand, there's certified eco-burial sites at Ōtaki, and New Plymouth's Awanui Cemetery. So as I stated, we recently attended a Whakatane Hui. I was invited to speak, and it was fascinating that a number there had actually read my PhD, because not even my family had read my PhD. And it's now online, which I discovered, which is interesting, the whole thing. So we are starting to um, network locally, and we've talked, I've talked to Bridget Murphy whose approach to um, Manawatu District Council. Um, had some discussion with the men's shed. Haven't got to e &M yet, but I understand some there are very interested in this option, so want to do a lot more of that. At the Whakatane Hui, we saw a number of options being used for natural burial, cardboard coffins, bamboo material shrouds. Um, we saw harakiki flax options, and we know there are also certified coffins that meet requirements. We would like to see a, um, a local resource that can be shared in the community. It wouldn't be that hard to establish. I mentioned um, the Atamiro Matau, the refrigerator cooling unit that goes under the coffin that Moi Turoa is having made in Auckland. Some of you might know Moi because he lived here for a while. I think he's from Foxton. Is that right, Chris? He talked to you, didn't he? More. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he has a, a partner who's from Holland, and in Holland they've actually now made embalming illegal it's because of the formaldehyde is um, carcinogenic, not good for the environment. So they were using something similar, and he came back and got someone in Auckland to start making them and at the moment selling them for $7,000. So that and some of the other things I mentioned there would be great to have as a community resource that could be hired or some of them purchased really low cost. So, you know, the funeral poverty as aspect of it is also really important to us. So I'll let Chris... And part of it, <coughs> the process is they're looking at training like funeral guides to be able to walk beside people then you going straight to the funeral directors, which I believe, you know, at the time when, when someone dies, you know, you're so deep in the grief that I suppose
suppose for want of a better word, you're sort of not manipulated, but you're sort of talked into doing a lot of things that uh, on hindsight you probably would not have done. I've been through both processes with my parents where I've had one parent at home and the other one not. And I find that, you know, there were certain situations through that all process that it could have been done a lot different. And um, and part of the guides is, is, yeah, is to walk beside them and give them the options and to offer this, you know, and I'm very interested in the eco um, sites because, you know, I'm, even at the moment I'm preparing, you know, I'm planning on mine because, you know, it's, I'm very much aware of my own mortality at present and, um, and to have these options for my whānau and to know that is there somewhere in Palms to North that I can be because I certainly don't want to go to the cemetery and I feel very quite strongly about that um, and I'd like to see these options and part of the process that they have put together, put together all these um, sort of resources. And, you know, they've got um, a whole thing on all the uh, different documents that we need because, you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding that's given to them. Yeah. And one is that you've got to be... Um, What's the word? Yeah, the, the myths. When I was doing yeah. my research, the big myths, you have to have a funeral director, you have to be embalmed, and some people yeah, still embalmed, think that, but, yeah. and it's never, ever been true. Mm. And there's very few requirements that you need. But because you rely on, on funeral directors, you rely on what they have to say, you think, oh, well, they, have the, they end up having more control than the family. And I think we want to step away from that. And part, you know, and part of that option is, is that having our eco-friendly cemeteries and, you know, um, where we can be whether we're being cremated or whether we're being buried. You know, I, you know, as so I bring it personally that I want it all very natural. And I have talked to my whānau who've never, you know, never done anything like this before, but, but it's a process and I think a lot of us don't talk about it. But to have these options, I really would like to see that here in, in Palmerston North. Because we are a town that's really coming forward and I see that with you know with the council we're doing lots of things and you know and this is another opportunity it's been 25 years since Jean first presented this let's not let it be another 25 years let's get it done now and find the land and you know find it because it's for our moko it's for our next generations that we're doing this let's not hear them say we were too lazy to get off our butts to do it. Let's not leave it to them. And we also now Let's know how it. urgent it is for the environment, for climate change, mm. to change our ways in a, in a big way all round. So um, I didn't mention we're now, now part of a national network um, mm. and which worked together for a submission to the Death, Funerals, Burial and Cremation Review on the 1964 Act, which the Ministry of Health is doing at the moment. So, yeah. We've run out of time. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you both for um, speaking to us and raising that in our consciousness. I'll just see um, if any um, elected members have um, or committee members have um, questions for you. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not really a question for the presenters, but more through you, if it would be possible to seek a comment from officers as to the status of this work, or if that's something that would need to come back as a report. Mm. Yep. I'm not familiar with the... the I'm, I am familiar with the work that happened around the, the site that was identified at Ashes, but I'm not familiar with the, um, where the work to date is at. I, if, Council looking for more information, I'd suggest um, the request to report back um, or, or that the information is provided through some other forum to councillors. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the um, comment, Mr Murphy, and just noting that answer if you want to action that. Uh, Mr Faipu. Um, thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, 
Dr. Hira Kuruatahi Krissi, uh, e mihi ana ki a mwa korua nei uh, kōdiru i tēnei ata, uh, ki tēnei komiti whaiti nei haunga te tai au, uh, o te rā pāna ki tēnei mea ko te tangihanga uh, me te pai hoki o mwa korua nei ingoa, te hā o hini ahuwane, that's a beautiful name and how appropriate and how fitting that name and, um, is for your movement and your cause and um, I just want to acknowledge the work, the 25 years that you've dedicated to this and I um, understand um, sometimes the silent voice that goes, sorry, the, the small voice that often goes unheard during that time and um, I resonate with what it is that you're proposing and what it is that you are suggesting. Um, so with that, I support that. Um, but I just want to, my, my question is more aimed at the weeds. Uh, Māori are no strangers to bylaws um, indirectly and how they have impacted upon a Māori culture, in particular those which have reduced tangihanga rules to three days during the summer, four days during the winter. And by that time frame, you must put the body in the ground. How does this sit in terms of an eco um, burial process uh, which um, to a point returns mana and modi to tangihanga appropriately as it was pre-European if it does and uh, has that been thought through um, is that a part is, is that also being suggested as a part of this proposal for eco burial um, or not Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, yeah I mean I don't presume to speak for Māori, but I think this is very important for Māori and, and part of um, our experience at the Whakatane Hui ha had quite a strong Māori uh, presence and one of the older kuia there said she remembered, because she's from around the east coast, she remembered her grandmother laying out the dead person and they didn't go away and come back again. It was all done on the marae and then somehow changes happened and... and um, People on the marae thought you had to had to go to the funeral director, go away, get be embalmed, come back. So, and there was a, um, a Māori woman there who is doing her PhD. So, Māori are actually um, developing their own bodies of research. That's really important, and I think, yeah, that coming together of the consumer voice of um, Māori of iwi of mana whenua in their different regions to say what is needed is really important because I guess I came to this from that health consumer background. I've been involved with home birth, got involved with home death. But my New Zealand examiner was Nahuia um, te, um, te Awakotuku. So there was a strong vetting of my PhD. Uh, and yeah, I think Māori are actually really starting to work out a lot about what they want, and what is their traditions. And the woman that was, is doing the PhD, part of that is her own whānau land was being used for eco, as an eco-cemetery, and part of her PhD was working in, and with the process of that. So that was really interesting. That was, you know, her, her land. That was part of the whole PhD and where it was going to happen. And as I think I mentioned, um, tangihanga around the east coast, um, they are starting to use Moy's invention or his adaption of what he saw in Holland. Um, and it's being held at um, a medical centre so that people can go and hire it and yeah, take it, take it to the marae when needed, basically, and avoid the whole embalming, but still um, be able to keep the two pāpāku um, in a really good condition for that three days or so that's needed. Because, yeah, keeps keeps the body really, really cold. Um, I know when I did my PhD, I was thinking we need something to sit to an electric blanket, but this goes actually under the coffin and it, it goes up and keeps things really, really cold. Whereas, you know, if you use dry ice, I mean, that you can end up freezing, which isn't what you want. And there is the techni ice and other things, but then you'd have to have a freezer and rotate. And mm. So, yeah, I mean, I think Moy is a good example that he, he's, he's named, um, I can't remember the name of it, I'll have to go and have a look, the, um, the 
Atamira Matal is this resource that's being right. used. Thank you. I'll just check with you, Mr. Fabio, that's answered your questions. I was just wondering, but you're talking about three to four days. Is yeah, uh, I'm talking, to, yeah, I'm, I'm just interested in what else is attached to the to the eco-burial um, mm. proposal. Um, as, as I was um, saying, Māori no strangers to bylaws. Yeah. Bylaws yeah. imposed upon Māori culture were that we could only hold the two pāpaku yeah. for four days during the winter, whereas yeah. in the past it would have been weeks. And I think that's... I don't know whether it's challenging bylaws or, or what it is, but um, that is, you know, I, I suppose we can't answer that, but it's something that we, we it does need to be looked at. That there shouldn't be, you know, this, a cut off. And I think even more so nowadays with all this COVID going on, we need longer, we need to be able to do our preparation longer and we need to be all together longer. Well, that's, yeah, that was really har harsh on people and the worry was that that would make quite harsh changes when this new legislation, look out for that legislation, uh, because we did challenge that the uh, Ministry of Health hadn't consulted well with Māori in the lead-up mm. to that, but um, they were starting to recognise that, but they're drafting the legislation, but then there'll be time to pre you know, present submissions. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, here to be no further questions. So again, thank you both for um, coming and presenting to us. You're welcome to um, retake your seats in the gallery um, as we move to the next stage. Thank you. So to draw the committee's attention, we have um, now two um, resolutions in front of us. I'll just check if the mover and seconder are happy to move and second both. Great, thank you. Um, so the first that the presentation from Teha Oheni Ao One, Palmerston North Women's Health Collective Incorporated, and Te Whare O Na Wahini, Palmerston North Women's Health Centre, be received for information. And secondly, that the presentation be referred to the Chief Executive to investigate options for eco burial in Palmerston North and report back to this committee. I will open up for comments and first to Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the presentation. I think this is um, timely to bring this forward now. As um, the acting general manager mentioned, we have had a, a, a program of work around eco-burial in the past, which for various reasons that have been well traversed in this chamber didn't um, result in a solution at that stage. So I think it is a good time to go back to some of that and see what can be picked up or what new options might be able to come forward. But I think this also now sits in a slightly bigger conversation than the one we were having a few years ago. I think what I'm hearing um, in the community is a, a move away from that beginning of life and end of life as a medical intervention, but as a recognition that life has many stages. Um, and sometimes medical intervention is required and a health response is required, but not all the time. Um, I have a friend who works as a doula, which is um, usually involved in a birth plan, but also works as an end-of-life doula. And that's something that's becoming much more common and is a service that's being looked for across our different communities. And Māori have a long tradition in this space, particularly, that we can learn from. Um, so look forward to seeing that report come back to the committee with options for how we might progress this work. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Um, no other speakers in the queue, so I'll just say again um, thank you um, to you both for again raising this in our consciousness. I think death is one of those things that we like to not talk about until we sort of have to, and, and I appreciate you guys making the effort to raise it in our consciousness now and in a practical way um, where something potentially can be done through um, the city, and I think in a timely way, noting that um, the district is is actively considering as well. So um, a very useful time to be extending that conversation here. So um, thank you both again. Assume that people are happy to take both of these um, together and we'll ask for a vote. And that's passed unanimously. Moving now to item six, 